violent depictions of women being beaten, raped, and run over by cars. You know, you guys act like this only happens towards women, but not towards men. It's not the movies, it's video games. Hate to break it to you, but there are plenty of fucking movies where women are beaten to death and raped in fucking movies more so than in fucking video games. In fact, I have rarely seen any video game where a woman gets literally raped. And now the women calling for change in this multi-billion dollar virtual industry are facing a very real backlash, including death threats. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Juju Chang. Just look well, at Anita Sarkeesian. This she's is the new like, normal. Well, she's under no threat at all, and everything that she says is absolute fucking bullshit. I don't know about you, but that's not a smile of concern. That is a smile of someone getting away with something. And I'm fully aware that I'm not the first person to notice this, nor will I be the last. Armed escorts at public events, tracking her every move. I'm surprised Anita Sarkeesian is not complaining about how her guards are only male and not female. What the fuck is wrong with her? I'm constantly aware of the fact that um, there's an enormous amount of hate directed towards me. Hate in the form yep. of bomb threats, rape threats, even death threats. Oh, you mean this death threat that somehow Gamergate has everything to do with, right? Uh, last time I checked, the death threat wasn't even credible. And hate to break it to you, but Gamergate has nothing to do with this death threat. On this morning, high alert at Loyola University in Chicago. It's Anita's first speaking engagement since threats of a shooting massacre forced her to cancel her last appearance. All because this media critic dared to criticize something millions of us play every day. People like the angry video gamer and nostalgia critic uh, reviews video games. They criticize video games, movies, music, etc. There is nothing wrong with criticizing a video game. What the problem with Anita Sarkeesian is that she has no fucking idea on how to criticize video games and that she's disrespecting the entire gaming culture. These people are invading a space they have no fucking respect for. But yet somehow, if we try to criticize them, somehow it is sexist and misogynistic. This is the sort of shit that we're talking about. Who plays video games? Video games. The threats making splashy headlines around the world. On shows like Melissa Harris Perry. The threat of violence? all too real and webcasts like democracy now and huff post live violent threats for pointing out sexism in video games things got heated to say the least That's the harassment nice. became part of what's now known as gamergate you want to know what's really fucking sad that none of these people have ever bothered to talk to anyone from gamergate or at least do a little bit of research on gamergate Seriously, wouldn't it be really nice if ABC Nightline could get people like Skeptor, uh, Monday Matt, uh, Sargon Vakad, Internet Aristocrat, Total Biscuit, anyone who has a very large voice within the Gamergate movement. It would be really nice if someone from any news media was to talk to someone from Gamergate so that way we don't have to deal with this bullshit lie. We can get two sides, you know, talk to each other and actually debate each other. But instead, what are they doing? They're siding with Anita Sarkeesian because either A, they want to milk the living shit out of her, or B, somehow Anita Sarkeesian has sold her soul to the devil, or perhaps maybe she is the devil, which means that I've been wrong my entire life, that there's actually is a god, but God is totally a fucking asshole to allow Anita Sarkeesian to even roam the fucking earth. What started as an online spat about the ethics of gaming journalism quickly escalated into a full-blown culture war. Not a culture war, a consumer revolt. But then again, I could be wrong, right? Women shouldn't be mere disposable objects or symbolic pawns in stories about men. And a small but hardcore group of gamers resistant to change. And why the fuck should we fucking change? Seriously, 
just to fit your fucking ideology, you sick fucks? God ordained that it is one man, one joystick. You know, I always wonder, where did his balls go after Anita Sarkeesian came to his show and decided to side with her because, I guess because she's a fucking woman, therefore we have to be some sort of obligation to be extra fucking nice. You know what he did on his video? The only video that he talked about Gamergate, he disabled his comments. But you have no idea on the amount of dislikes this guy has. Seriously, just take a fucking look. But Gamergate doesn't just affect boys playing in a basement. The oh yeah, cause apparently boys only play video games and not girls. You know, my sister, uh, believe it or not, played GTA 5 and it's actually one of her favorite games of all times. Hmm, I wonder why. The stakes are much higher than you might think. We're now spending more money on games than movies and music combined to the tune of $21 billion. And what might surprise you, there are now more adult women playing video games than there are teenage boys. While that may be true, keep in mind that women have their own fucking taste. They lean towards more kid-friendly games such as uh, Tetris or Farmville. I'm not saying that there are no women out there that play games like GTA 5 or Gears of War, Halo, God of War, uh, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, all those violent video games. There's gonna be a few women out there that do in fact play these video games. However, most of these female gamers do not care on whether or not this the player they choose is either male or female. Hell, in Borderlands 2, I am playing as a female. And guess what? I do not feel any different than playing uh, Kratos in God of War. We're talking about fantastical scenarios like the ones in Bioshock and epic adventures in games like Mirror's Edge. What is it exactly that's so disturbing in some video games that's making women like Anita willing to face death threats? Well, a shit ton of money is a start. Just when you think you hit the worst example or the most misogynist example, you find another one. Escapism is big business. More than half of us are already playing games like this one, Grand Theft Auto V. What the fuck? What is this unnecessary bullshit I'm seeing? But critics say in these virtual worlds, things often take a turn toward the dark side. Wow, did it take you fucking years just to figure that out? As a player, you can solicit a prostitute, kill her, and if that's not enough, you have the option to run her over. The same game that forces you to torture a man, but it's not some cisgender white man, but rather a Indian and the funny thing is that no Indian that I have ever heard of would say that this is totally fucking racist So how come it's not racist to torture someone that is Indian But to run over a female is apparently sexist And last time I checked you tend to kill more men than women In fact, I don't recall any mission where you have to kill a woman the sense of violence against women being used as almost background decoration, right? As texture to make an environment gritty, more real. There are prostitutes in real fucking life, and yet you demand that women should be more realistic? This is how realistic that women can be. Women can be whores, women can be smart, women can be anything. And yet somehow this aspect bothers you. There are plenty of games that aren't violent or sexualized, but some of the best-selling games are especially egregious. On her website, Anita dissects these games. Developers regularly utilize the brutalization of women's bodies, and especially the bodies of female prostitutes. Her goal? To bring attention to what she calls the inherent misogyny in the gaming world. And this is the major reason on why Anita Sarkeesian is hated. I'll teach you! In Watch Dogs, she points out how women are murdered to give the hero a reason to chase down a bad guy. 
it gets worse and worse. It reinforces this idea of women as sexual objects, right? It reinforces this idea of women as um, playthings for their amusement. And because obviously this never fucking happens towards men. It's this kind of talk that makes her a target. And that's when the cyber mob, right, the hate mob descended. Bombarding her with mostly anonymous tweets and messages. I will rape you when I get the chance. Hiding behind usernames and claims of free speech. I'm sitting outside your apartment with a loaded gun. Your neighbors won't hear you screaming in pain. Well, aren't you a special little snowflake? Because last time I checked, this happens towards both genders. Someone even created a grotesque game where players can beat and punch a picture of her face. Ow. You know, if someone was to make a video game where they get to beat the living shit out of me, I would not care because it's just a fucking video game. And I do not care if someone was to create an avatar of me and beat the living shit out of me. Because if anything, it only makes me more fucking popular and how desperate this guy is to get my attention. But the virtual harassment turned very real when her online attackers published her social security number, her home address. We already said that Gamergate is already against these sort of actions. If someone was to do this, then please put them into light and bring them into question. And she's not the only one. Brianna fucking Wu. I have never said anything about Brianna Wu because there's really nothing much for me to say about her. She's just one big fucking cunt. They told me they were coming to kill me. They told me specifically they were going to castrate my husband. Women like Brianna Wu, an independent game developer, was even driven out of her home, all for simply tweeting her opinion. And yet we see Brianna Wu in her own fucking house in every fucking interview that she has ever been. I am very doubtful that she actually had to move out of her house in order to avoid getting killed. When someone posts your address online and they tell you they're going to murder your whole family, you don't really feel safe staying at that location. And yet, she has never moved from her fucking house. She's been in her own fucking home in every fucking interview that she's ever been in. She's nothing more than a big fat liar. So far, the Gamergate harassment against Brianna and other women like her has remained online. But the FBI is taking it seriously enough that it started a file. I'm so hesitant to use the phrase terror because I think it's such a politically loaded word. But oh, let's face it. You want to say that Gamergate is nothing but full of terrorists that hate women. This is... It's terrorism on women in this industry. If there's really a war on women, then how come there are so many women that is in support of Gamergate? And keep in mind that none of these women are sock puppets or brainwash individuals. These are full grown adults making a conscious decision to be in support of a movement that's all about ethics and journalism. If Gamergate is truly just anti-women, then wouldn't it make more sense to not have women in support of Gamergate and instead create campaigns to prevent women from ever touching a fucking video game? Wouldn't that make much more sense? It's, it's scaring every single one of us. Why such hate? Why such anger? I think a lot of it comes from this idea that gaming is a male-dominated space. Holy fuck is this wrong! right and that games are for men by men but it's a very misogynist backlash that's stupid you're stupid stop being stupid we are not meant to be treated with respect something even the casual female gamer yeah. is sadly familiar with watch what happens when the men in this online session of counter-strike learn that there's a woman playing in their midst are you an archaeologist because i have a big bone so she's examining this is pretty lady if i if i subscribe would you give me a big kiss it's less brutal than what Anita and Brianna experienced, but it does show the ease with which offensive behavior is tossed out at women. You do realize that this is just one guy being a total fucking dick towards this one person. And plus, this is called smack talk. This is common within gaming community. 
I'd give you my skins for some skin if you know what I mean, huh, sexy lady, huh? I'm really just here to play, like everybody else. But she's not treated like everyone else, which is at the heart of Gamergate. Media critics argue women like Stephanie need to stop being abused as players in the real world and as avatars in the virtual world. People like her need to grow a thick set of skin. And given that women make up nearly half of this country's gamers... You know, I know she's playing Marvelous's Capcom 3, but I've never seen someone play like that before. This isn't a feminist issue, it's just smart business. The demographics should be a huge wake-up call to executives of gaming companies because there is a huge amount of money to be made out of taking women seriously and out of demonstrating to women that you are taking them seriously. We've reached out for comment multiple times to Rockstar Games, Ubisoft, the companies behind these games, to ask about the way women are portrayed. But thus far, we've received no reply. And why the fuck should they? They're doing the right thing to not respond to this bullshit because these women are nothing more than big fucking pussies. And yet there are some signs of change in the gaming community. It's time to just realize things from a different perspective. It's time to see how would someone else, how would a woman look at this? More and more developers like Tim Schafer are seeing the need for more women programmers and more girl-friendly games like Broken Age. I better go find that knife. I mean, once you sat down and tried to play the game with your daughter and tried to find games where she can play a character that she identifies with, you start to feel bad about not putting that option in your own games. Most people who play video games do not really care on who the character is. May it be male or female. Again, like I said, in Borderlands 2, I am a female. Not a male, a female. And guess what? I do not feel any different as plain as a man. You get the idea? It doesn't matter to me if the character is male or female. What matters is the plot, the gameplay, the music, etc. Those are the key elements to make a good video game. Even Lara Croft, the famous Tomb Raider, got a makeover. More clothes, less curves. Because most people who play the video game do not care what the character looks like. As long as the game is fucking good, then the character can look like a piece of shit for all they care. I remember playing Tomb Raider Guardian of the Light and it was designed, it was uh, produced by a woman. And it was like a really good game and the game did well. So we're gonna see more of that. The majority of gamers, like Chris Scott, manager of 8-Bit and Up, oh. condemn Gamergate's threats of violence. Which way is he? Which way is he? But he's not alone in believing critics like Anita exaggerate the problem. She's trying to capitalize on controversy. He also says the gaming world on the whole shouldn't be judged by a few extreme examples. Oh, okay. When people complain about games like Assassin's Creed, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty or whatever, it's similar to complaining about hip-hop and rap music today, saying, well, it's violent. That's not what hip-hop is about. You can't judge gaming by what's selling. You have to really get into the medium to understand it before you start saying, well, this is what gaming is about. Scott suggests, at the end of the day, they're just they games. Changing. I know in the real world, there are strong women that don't need to be saved. Spoken like a true gamer. How do you respond to critics who say, well, this is fantasy, this is not reality, you have to lighten up? Yeah, that's a fun argument. Games have a huge impact on our society, so it's not just fantasy. It actually works to, to potentially reinforce some pretty harmful messages about women. If that's true, then crime would be fucking scary skyrocketing off the fucking roof, off the freaking charts, to a point where we had to ban video games in order to reduce the amount of crime. Get away from her. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in San Francisco, California. You know, the amount of dishonesty that ABC has is incredibly surprising. Like, I've seen some terrible, terrible lies that news media has made and apparently ABC has made the worst case scenario ever by being completely dishonest. I thought that there would be at least a few people out there that actually care about the truth, who actually do some form of investigation, but apparently, I don't know how Anita does it. I don't know if Anita Sarkeesian has bribed ABC somehow by 
making her the ultimate victim by making her the only side that people should listen it's like most media outlets do not care about gamergate they see us as terrorists and there is nothing that we say or can do that can change their minds you know what i feel like i feel like gathering a big mob and just walking towards manhattan and then you know make everyone hold up a sign that says we support Gamergate talk to Gamergate ABC we should do that just gather up a big mob and start protesting against ABC you know it's a nice and peaceful protest and hopefully ABC will listen will actually take a chance to listen to the Gamergate side to actually do some freaking research i don't hold my breath for this but i really hope that there is someone out there who has a bigger voice than i do to convince people that we need to take the fight towards abc and just convince them to at least listen to our side me i only have like 226 subs and I might reach 250 at either the end of this month or somewhere in the middle of next month. And even then, I am just one simple YouTuber. Until then, I am the Atheist Gamer. And if you're wondering why I'm not showing myself on video, it is simple. Because I am not under any obligation to show my face. Peace the game out. If you enjoy watching this video, click on the like button, subscribe to this channel for more videos, and of course you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and ugh, Google+. We all know Google+, fucking sucks.